Hello everybody. The eruption in Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula has ended, meaning it only lasted for two and a half days. This means no infrastructure will be damaged, so this can be seen as an early Christmas gift for everyone, especially the people of Grindavík. Samples taken from the lava field have been analyzed, allowing us to compare it to, for example, eruptions from the Fagradalsfjall system. Even though the eruption has ended, uplift still seems to be ongoing in the area, and at the same rate before the eruption, implying that there is still magma flowing into the chamber under Svartsengi. Yes, we're talking about a magma chamber, more on that later. But does this uplift mean an eruption is yet again imminent? Is this the same magma that came up during the eruptions in Fagradalsfjall? Well, let's check out the details. Before we get into those questions, I wanted to dedicate a brief section on how to pronounce the name of this new lava field, as I think it'll definitely be remembered for a while for its sheer size. Sund Nuka Gigar It is derived from an event that occurred 2,800 years ago, in the same spot as this eruption. That event was surprisingly also an eruption, which left behind a massive lava field around 15 to 20 square kilometers in size. The name of that eruption was Sund Nuka Gigar too, but it was not derived from an even older eruption in the same area. No, it was given this name by sailors in the Middle Ages, as the craters from this old eruption were easily recognizable from the sea and would have been used as navigation. A good way to pronounce the word is by splitting it into three parts, Sund, Nuka, Gigar. If you want to be extra fancy, you can add Hraun after all that. You can play that back a few times to get a better grip. Now on to the details. Our experts managed to use satellite data to get an accurate size of the lava field and it clocks in at 3.7 square kilometers and looks something like this. So it covers a greater area than the last two eruptions combined, despite only erupting for two days. The maximum output of the eruption was of course in the beginning, and it has now been narrowed down to somewhere around 300 cubic meters per second, which is just mind-blowing. That almost makes it the most output from an effusive eruption in Iceland in three centuries. But Holhraun managed to cling on to that title as its maximum output was 350 cubic meters per second during its initial stages. This eruption did not originate from the same system as the last three eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula. The first three eruptions were from the Fagradalsfjall system, whereas this new eruption was from the Svartsengi system. The strange part is that the lava samples from this eruption is the same magma that produced the ones in the Fagradalsfjall system, although it is slightly more developed, meaning that magma sat for much longer in the crust, allowing it to crystallize, which makes the magma less viscous. That is a crucial difference, as it suggests that the Svartsengi system itself is more developed. There seems to be a magma chamber under the Blue Lagoon and Mount Thorbjörn, as all the intrusion events since 2020 have been centered in that area. Whether this magma chamber was just created in 2020 from a sill intrusion, or if it's older, suggesting there's a central volcano in the system, is uncertain. It'll be exciting to see what our experts discover. Even though this eruption was really different from the previous three on the peninsula, it more resembles classic Icelandic effusive eruptions, with our experts feeling more at home with it. Then there's the uplift. Based on GPS equipment in the area around Mount Thorbjörn, it is still ongoing, despite two pretty big intrusion events. So it looks like this chamber under Svartsengi is still receiving magma, and at a similar rate as before the eruption. At least that's what it looks like now. We'll have to give it a bit more time to be certain, two or three days. 
If uplift is still ongoing then, it's almost certainly caused by magma, meaning another eruption could be around the corner. When could that eruption happen? Well, if we take a look at the precursor of this eruption, we can see that as soon as uplift reached the same heights as it was on November 10th, before the massive subsidence event, earthquake activity resumed, and an hour later, an eruption occurred. These uplift readings only match the Schwarzenke GPS station. As with the others, such as the GPS station in Eldwerp and Mount Thorbjörn, the uplift hadn't reached the same heights as before the subsidence event. This suggests the uplift center is somewhere close to the Schwarzenke GPS station, which is basically at the Blue Lagoon. During the eruption, ground subsided by 7 to 8 centimeters. So, if uplift rate continues at the same pace as before the eruption, it would take around 13 days to recover from that loss. What happens then is uncertain. We could see something similar to this eruption, where as soon as uplift got to the right height, magma shot out of the chamber, creating a dike intrusion, which resulted in an eruption. We could also see something different, with a much slower pace perhaps. That is something we can't know with our current understanding of geology. So, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.